right. What we've got here is a, is a coin on a horizontal disc, which is a distance of 0.14 meters from the center. Disc rotates at a constant rate in a clockwise direction as seen from above. The coin doesn't slip. Uh, and the time it takes for a complete revolution is 1.5 seconds. The figure below shows the disc and the coin in view from above. Draw and label the vectors. What's a vector? arrow which has size and direction. It's not necessarily a force. Anything can be a vector if, uh, as long as it has a direction associated with it. So a displacement vector or velocity vector, acceleration vector, things, things like that. Uh, so draw and label vectors to show the instantaneous acceleration and linear velocity of the coin. Which direction is the acceleration? Towards, towards the center. Things moving around in a circle. So we have to have acceleration towards the center of that circle in order to make the turn. What about the velocity? Which direction would the velocity vector be in? Which way? Up and curved or up and straight? Tangent to the motion, whatever you want to call it. Velocity around a circle is always tangent to the circle or on the edge. Uh, acceleration is always towards the direction of the center of the circle, etc. Be very, very careful to read the questions before you answer them. Almost always the first part of these questions is to draw a free body diagram, but in this case it wants you to just use direct acceleration and velocity. So just make sure you read the questions. All right, speed of the coin. Where do we start? V squared over R. What's that equal to? So it's AC equals V squared over R. Okay, that gets us to velocity. That's one way to solve for it. Do we know the acceleration of the coin? No. Do we know the radius that it is? Yes. Do we know the velocity? don't know acceleration, we don't know velocity, so that's two unknowns. It's going to be hard to solve that for velocity. Any other way we can solve for velocity? We're in a circle. What else? Time and distance. Velocity, remember, is change in position divided by time, or change in displacement. Displacement, rather. What is the displacement of the coin? It's going to make one complete revolution in that given amount of time. So we know how far it goes. We know how long it takes to do that. So we can use this change in position equation. If this doesn't look familiar, it is from this. Why don't we include the acceleration? It's not in the centripetal. The acceleration is centripetal. It is not in the tangential direction of the velocity. So that whole thing goes to nothing, which leaves us with displacement is VOT, divide both sides by T, and we have our definition of velocity. So what is the change in position? 2 pi times the radius, which is 2.14 meters, divided by the time, 1.5 seconds. The displacement. Velocity, remember, is displacement only. Oh, oh, I see. I see. The distance traveled uh, would have to be there. Yeah, the average velocity for the thing is zero because it doesn't make any change in position. But the instantaneous velocity, we can calculate using that. So 2 pi times 0.14, is somebody got a calculator? Can you do that? Meters per second for our velocity. Okay, so 
there's several different methods, and you're going to find there's going to be several different methods for calculating a lot of things. You can solve for centripetal acceleration using v squared over r. You can just as easily solve for it using f equals ma if you know the forces. For velocity, you can also use this equation or the change in position equation. So there's sometimes multiple methods for solving these things. Uh, you don't always have enough information to do one, so you have to look at the other one. So keep an open mind when it comes to those. Part C says uh, the rate of rotation of the disk has gradually increased as things started to go faster and faster. The coefficient of static friction between the coin and the disk is 0.5. Determine how fast it can go before the coin starts to clip. I have a question. The forces question. What do we do with forces question? Free body diagram. Free body diagram of what? The coin or the disk? The coin. That's the object that we care about. So what's the free body diagram of the coin look like? Gravity. some force which causes the centripetal acceleration. That's the only force that's left, so it has to be centripetal. No other direction that could possibly be. All right, so now we've got that. What do we do? F equals MA equation. In which direction will we be applying F equals MA? The centripetal direction place to start because the friction which we're solving for or involving in our process is centripetal. So some of the forces are centripetal equals MA. We have only one force in the centripetal direction and that's friction. So we flip mass times AC. Do you want to substitute or keep AC? Okay, guys. Um, all right. So, what are we? What are we even solving for here? We're solving for speed. We're solving for speed. Friction times radius divided by mass square root equals velocity. So, go ahead and solve it algebraically. If you want to, if you'd rather go ahead and put numbers in here, you can. You can do that. Multiply by r, divide by mass, take the square root of it. Do we know friction? We do. We know the coefficient, which is not friction, but, but we can solve for it using the normal form. So we don't know friction right now, so we need to go ahead and solve for that, because we can't get velocity without knowing what friction is. And what is friction equal to? times the normal force. Of course, the friction is the normal force, 0 0.5. And what is the normal force? In this case, the normal force is an mg with no acceleration. So this is another substitution of mg. Normal force is always going to be equal to mg if there's no other forces or accelerations involved in that direction. So friction, 0 0.5 times the mass. know it? 0 0.005 times gravity. What's that? 0 0.025 newtons, which is the force. Now let's take a second and show you something real quick. This 
is a reason why we want to always try to do things algebraically prior to putting any numbers. Look what happens. matter? No. Does gravity matter? No. Those are two weird things. It doesn't matter what size coin you put on there. It doesn't matter as far as the velocity goes anyway. And it doesn't matter whether you're on the moon or another planet as far as the velocity goes. Oh, where did I get that other T? Yeah, I just kind of made up that other T there. So it does matter. GR over nothing. Square root of mu GR. Anyway, that was a little aside. That's going to be important for the last question. Let's go ahead and finish up what we've got here. Square root of friction, 0 0.025 newtons. Times the radius. What was the radius? by the mass, zero, jump, 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 zero, five kilograms equals the velocity. And what's that? 25.14 divided by 0 0.05 root of that, 0.84. Once again, with force problems, we don't always know exactly where we're going with it, but if we follow the procedure, we're going to get there in the end. Um, free body diagram, F equals MA, and then work it out, and we got to our answer uh, without knowing how we were going to get there in the end to begin with. Last part, if part C were repeated with the second identical coin glued to the top of the first one, how would it affect the answer to part C? How would that affect? No effect. And you can write a whole paragraph on how to do this, but it's better if you showed it algebraically. You show the mass and then dividing out. So F equals MA, friction equals MV squared over R, mu normal force equals MV squared squared over R, and that's all you got to show.